Well, welcome back to the uh, Off-Road Worldwide stage here at 4x4 Expo. We've got plenty more uh, chat coming up throughout the day. Um, and while we're here, of course, we've got to thank our, uh, our sponsors for the event. Uh, Paul Myers at Britpart, Dale Wheeler of 4x4 Off-Road Driving School, Gary Wood from Alive Motorsport, Richard Canterbury from RCM, and Paul Jones at ProLinks. And a big thank you to John Aston of VoxCloud and Chris Bowler at Cambrian 4x4 for, for keeping the team here fed and fueled uh, and ready to, to appear and share their sport with you here at the show. Coming up now, we've got Henry Webster talking with uh, Ed Cobley on his experiences in motorsport. Henry. Thanks very much, Gordon. Uh, so welcome back. We've got another, another session of chat. Uh, for this afternoon, I'm joined now by Ed Cobley, who I'd say is one of the most visible personalities in off-road motorsport. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and also happens to be one of my main rivals on stage. So uh, here, here we are, on stage, different sort of stage, uh, going to have a bit of a chat through how you got into the sport uh, and, and kind of your, your development through, through time. I mean, you, you, you've been in the sport a long time. Yeah, so I'm 43 years old now. Um, been in it all my life really so I've been privileged enough to uh, obviously be brought into the off-road world by my father via my grandfather uh, he was British motocross champion 1950 1953 so my whole life was mapped out from motocross bikes at a very young age of two um, personal injuries so I went into racing go-karts the old Polaris uh, or the Honda Pilots as it was quad bikes and uh, started co-driving at sort of 13 years old for people like yourself Henry and, and watching the Andy Sargent's and and Guy Smith as a child, um, and obviously become enthused. Uh, 16 years old, started sort of getting some co-driving uh, under my belt, um, and then offered drives. So started driving in the winch challenge scene, so winching up a hill, hoping the cable didn't snap. Uh, 2004, got very bored with the winch events, uh, become very samey, we did very, very well. Um, and then landed on my feet and bought that famous Wildcat that was on uh, Top Gear. Um, Met with Mr. Bowler, and then from 2005, sort of 2016, 17, um, I then was privileged enough to drive with Drew and with the Wildcats, see the, the, the build of the Nemesis into the EXR, uh, the real change of face for the Bowler and the Rally Raid scene, um, and obviously move with them with the Bulldog as well, which they're making still with, uh, with Bowler now. Uh, so very, very privileged to, to be in a world of people such as Drew, Dan Evans, God rest both their souls. Um, so yeah, very privileged and then to race against yourself on some of the hill rallies in, uh, you're obviously in Moo, I'm in Skippy 2.0 and we seem to be able to make these modified production cars do things they shouldn't do. Yeah, there's, there's something quite fun about being at the sharp end of the competition with a, with a modified production car, with something that looks like a normal day-to-day -day Land Rover. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the, the quote of the, the event was taking a Shire horse to the Grand National. Um, every time I looked in the mirror, there was a moo cow behind me at the start line, sometimes on the stage as well. Um, and as you say, it, taking a, a standard production that a lot of people are driven on green lanes, tracks, and trying to drive them fast, it, it constantly teaches me skills within the vehicle. Uh, anybody watches my social media pages, we have had a few near misses uh, on a couple of the last rallies where a defender wants to be a bicycle. A um, little bit of skill set and a lot of luck has got us back on our wheels to the end of the stage. Um, but no, no, get out and watch the All Drive Club, the Northern, Southern Counties, Midlands Off-Road Club, the Hill Rallies, speak to your local clubs. One, we need people out there with video cameras, getting it out on social media. Uh, and two, the grassroots, you've got people that are racing the Freelanders in the Freelander Challenge. And that's a challenge that's really close to our hearts because it, it is standard, mod or mod standard vehicles. Yeah. Uh, which brings people in uh, and then you've got the Can-Ams uh, and the go-karts I think are really annoying the top top guys because they're fabulous in what they do the Can-Ams the Polaris's and, and some of the guys that drive them as well um, great vehicles but just looking around here it's, it's wonderful to see such a range of vehicles so you've had a as you say a fantastic opportunity to drive so many different types of vehicles okay. are there any favorites amongst them yeah, so August last year I had the uh, pleasure of being in Dubai uh, and actually driving Nasser Al-Attiyah's winning Dakar car, um, which 
it's got an engine, it's got a gearbox, it's got four wheels, but the rest of it's carbon fibre, and it was like nothing I've ever driven before. I've driven some World Rally cars, I've driven World Rally cross cars, uh, the amazing bowler vehicles that anybody sees the shows that Drew and I have done. The car handles like a rally car, but it weighs 2.4 tonne. But this Toyota, I have never been in a machine that I... It scared me, but you had to drive it to a level that I wasn't used to, to NASA's level. Anybody who watches him in the Dakar. So initially the car didn't work. It, it just felt, it, it just didn't work until we got that car to, up to temperature and really smashing the big dunes. But I have never driven a vehicle that was so compliant on the edge, but yeah, 600,000 pounds later. Uh, it's an expensive machine, but yeah, that was definitely one of my favorites. To look at, to listen to, it's gotta be the Bowler Wildcat. For me, it's a vehicle that Drew spent a lot of time um, coming from the Tomcat that's still around. Some of the guys are still racing it and doing very well um, that went into the space frame. But the Tomcat uh, led to the Wildcat and the Wildcat, the sound of it, setting car alarms off, driving on the road, the look of it, because it had that silhouette of the green oval, but with that sort of Frankenstein look about it. Uh, and Drew and his team, they had the highest finished Dakar rate of yeah. any manufacturer, you yeah. know? Um, so we are very privileged to race in the UK scene. We've got some amazing car builders. You've got Guy Smith, you've got Dan at Lofthouse. Um, the Wind Challenge and the Ultra 4 scene, I am so far out of now, it's unbelievable. But some amazing, amazing car builders and some amazing minds within the off-road world. I'm looking at one at the minute that just looks beautiful. Um, got a VW badge on it, but um, a beautiful looking thing. So, I mean, how do you get back out of a, of a vehicle like NASA's Toyota and back into Skippy. Uh, <laughs> Skippy, you have to own it, otherwise it's going to own me. You know, I have to really keep on on, on top of the car. Um, it's still got a Defender turning circle. It's still live axle. Um, yes, we've got coils, coil overs, but it's not independent. It's not weighted to jump. Um, I did find a big, so I got out of the. Uh, Hilux in, in Dubai and come back, almost came back straight to the hill rally. I had to go and drive Skippy on the road just to get my head into the braking point and, and, and changing gear because the torque curve of the diesel is very different. very different. With the V8, you really have to strangle the thing because it's normally aspirated. Um, in the desert, you've got the resistance of the sand. Um, but off the back of me driving out there, I got offered a job uh, in Dubai, um, which at the moment I'm thinking about taking. Oh, very nice. Excellent. Maybe take take you away from the sport in the UK, which would be a shame. But. Yeah, they want me to sell my car in the UK, but I don't think I can sell, sell Skippy. It's no. been, we've had it since brand new. Um, it ran a lot of the Land Rover Owner Adventure Club Morocco trips as a stock car for its first right. three years. Um, after that, we took it off. I then uh, used it just as a standard double cab, just some everyday car, as I love the double cab. Unfortunately, some of our criminals decided they wanted the car one night, so Skippy got stolen um, using a cash machine robbery, hence why she's 14 inches shorter. Um, <laughs> it broke down, uh, hence why the criminals left it at the side of the road. Um, I then picked it up off the police, um, and then it sat for four years, slowly being robbed to keep Picked our other vehicles yeah, going yeah, yeah. as they do uh, whilst i was driving for drew and really working with the the bulldog at the time and, and working with his team getting the bulldog working uh, and then as we all know drew passed away um, the shareholders took over uh, and i'll be straight out there i didn't get on with some of the shareholders so i jumped ship um, yep. and bowler is where it is now land rover took it on they're onto great things with the defender challenge uh, I just decided it was time to build something in my double garage and convert a standard Land Rover and see how fast I could push with no limitations. And I, and I, I wanted to talk about that a bit because I think one of the things that people don't necessarily realise about the sport is often there's more time spent in the garage than there is out in the stages. No, absolutely. I, I took the engine out of Skippy, put it back in nine times until I got it to where I wanted. Um, and it was, it was, I'm not an engineer. I don't know what GCSEs I got from school. Um, the majority I were doing things on a grinder, cutting metal out, and then I'd send it over to my good friends at Blackbird Engineering. They'd CNC cut it, we'd weld it on, and it worked. Um, Rick from RAC, um, I built the back of it, and at Tong uh, on the British last year, we were cutting bits off my trailer to keep Skippy going, because we were bending all of my bits. Uh, Rick at RAC then, as you go and look at the back of the car now, 
over-engineered it to build the strength into the car that we need, Henry, you know. Yeah, we right. need they to carry the speed. Abuse. They do, the live axle, it's a heavy car. So yeah, it's, uh, it took me a year and a half of rebodying it, unbodying it, cutting bits off, welding them back on, speaking to someone who knows how to weld and fabricate properly, um, getting them to help me, uh, and then get it to the start of the stage. And we won the British in the modified production class, uh, very proud of that. We then went against the hill rallies after the first stage. Didn't think we were going to do so well because my boost pipe come off and you yeah. were in front of us, which I, I wasn't thought, happy I with. My, I thought my day had come. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the second stage, I overdrove the car somewhat, which is the famous picture of us on two wheels. Um, and then very privileged throughout the race, the stages just came to me. Um, everybody else is having problems. Uh, but I love the hill rallies. You know, we, a lot of people think we've got pace notes. We get to drive the routes first. No, we get a picture of an OS map and somebody who wants to strap themselves next to us and try and read a map in a defender at speed it's very much we're driving the stages on what we can see and what yeah. we remember from five years seven years ago um so, so there one are one of the nice things about that event last year was none of us had seen any of the stages they were all new very few of the stages yeah. before maybe or it was, oh, i remember so, that bend yeah um no they were great stages um and the hill rallies are a spectacle they really are you've, you've got some of these lightweight 500 plus horsepower cars then you've got standard production, you've got stock freelanders, you've got the Defender Challenge, and they're bringing the all new Defender to the. Yeah, and, and what they're doing is absolutely fantastic, Amazing. you know, really showing the adaptability with the brand, the modern brand. Everyone thinks Land Rover's got luxury, but as we can clearly see, they've still got that DNA. Still a proper thing. You know, yeah. all they're doing is putting in the bowler cage, they're doing the bowlerism to it, so they're getting the suspension on. Um, and they've got a great team driving the brand, and, and I hope to see the bowler brand climbing again. I obviously still want to beat them until I drive for them again, possibly. Um, <laughs> but what they're doing with that brand and that car, um, it's quite phenomenal, it really is. I, I was obviously privileged to win the original Defender yeah, Challenge course. three times over. Um, I'm not a technology-based lover, and I can't afford £99,500 to drive the new car. Um, so it's, it's, I'm going to continue with Skippy this year, I think, and, and see where it takes us next year. And, and so is Skippy now where you want it to be? Where, where... No, because I'll sell it then. Um, <laughs> it will never be where. You and I chatted earlier on. Yeah. I, if I can put it on more of a diet, um, we're looking at fiberglass stroke carbon roof, carbon doors, um, try and reduce the weight of the car a little bit. But strength-wise, the power I've got out of the engine from Jose at TD5 inside, uh, and the ability to abuse the engine. Uh, I know there's mappers out there that claim they've got the fastest car in the world. They probably have on tarmac. Um, it's certainly a brutal thing. Yeah, it, it works so, so well. Um, I was saying, just a TD5, yes, we've made it to a sequential gearbox. Um, I've got the clutch from Luke at Loft, and I have absolutely not bells out of that clutch because I will dip the clutch to spoil the turbo sometimes. Um, and the clutch is not absolutely never once has it slipped uh, i've got luke's brakes on there from loft as well i've changed to a mintex pad and i can brake so late so predictable um 1166 yeah yeah i mean they, they wear out they're expensive but any decent pad um does Doing so that gives job. me the predictability um i've bit, then got a bit, bit like tires if they're not wearing they're not gripping. absolutely uh, and i run just a stock tire i'm running the davanti territories Devante have been very kind to me, uh, a financial sponsor, which is very, very difficult in this world. Absolutely. Um, they're coming with a new mud tire later on, which I'm very excited to launch. We're going to look at bringing Skippy into some of the King of the Britain, some of the sort of high-speed winching stuff next year, just to see where we get a little bit of exposure and a bit of fun out there. Yeah. Uh, we haven't got a British championship at the moment. Hill rallies uh, are difficult because of land access, the cost of land. Uh, not many people realize the cost of a rally going over someone's stage of the, the maintenance of it, the, the, the full infrastructure is, is actually really expensive. Very, very expensive, but I think one of the things that the hill rallies are beginning to, uh, well, the, the big revolution for hill rallies in the last few years has been the ability to put road sections into, yeah. so closed public roads. Definitely, definitely. Because that opens out much, much more possibility to yeah. use smaller bits of land, smaller pockets, farmland. And, Absolutely. and that, as was shown on the Welsh Hill Rally last year. Yeah, and I hope that we can speak to the landowners. Obviously, we're not going back into anything to do with uh, government, but with Brexit now, our farmers need to potentially diversify. Um, so if there are any farms lo local, give someone a shout in an off-road world, because I'm sure we'll go and look at it. Um, 
National Resources Wales, obviously protecting the rivers and lakes. That's changed sweet lamb and a lot of what we're doing. But we are still aware of the environment. We are still aware that we have a big impact on the infrastructure and restaurants, fuel, you know, um, the Welsh pool this year. I, I spoke to a lot of landowners, uh, even fuel stations. Skippy, on, on, we worked out we were doing nearly a mile of fuel to a litre or a litre yeah, of fuel to a mile. We were exactly the you same. Know, yep. um, the fuel stations are really loving it. And, and it's really nice that people are on the roads, they're taking videos of the cars, um, and we're received in quite a high... Uh, they love us being there, which is what we really need for motorsport. The, the, the fuel stations do persist on putting these lovely signs outside that remind you how much you're spending in fuel on the stage. Yeah, but, indeed, very yeah, expensive. <laughs> too easy to calculate. So, uh, we, we were talking about, a bit about this earlier, I think... It's an interesting one because you, you, you and I have both been, as we say, at the sharp end of uh, production class, but actually in amongst some of the specials on stages. And uh, have, you, have you never fancied a crack at that that top end and building a building a top end car and, and going for the outright honours? Definitely. Um, I was in talks with Dan Evans at Protection and Performance and Dan Lofthouse. Uh, I did own a Lofthouse, uh, but unfortunately. I have two children, and as everybody does, a, a life, and I can't. I don't have a business behind me. Uh, it is very, very expensive uh, to build these cars. But no, I'd love to. Um, I feel I've got a relatively competent skill set that would see me at the top, um, set in top three stage times against loft houses that have got twice the power and half the weight. Uh, Aston and I felt we could really attack them. Um, would I get the same feeling out of driving something that's quick and winning, out of driving something that's not quick and still doing very well? I don't think I would. No, I think that's the thing. Again, it, it's, it, there's, a, there's a real joy that comes out of being up amongst it with something that shouldn't be there. No, absolutely. I mean, 2014 uh, stings in my mind, the Dukeries Rally. Very sandy, very rutty. We were in Skippy 1 uh, at the Bowler Defender. Uh, and we managed to carry so much speed through these complex of five and six pluses that we came out of the bends and we actually overtook on stage a world rally in Prezza in a 2.2 diesel Defender. Uh, the co-driver was shouting slow down at the time, uh, but for me that, that will live with me for the rest of my life was going through the ditch past them uh, in front of all the uh, spectators that were going absolutely crazy because there's a Defender going past a world rally car, um, the same angle as the world rally car. So. Yeah, the Defender is still there. We all still love the car. We've only got to see how many modifications with... I mean, my car's lighter, Optimil. Uh, the guys there have fully Optimil me up now, so I'm even lighter. There's some amazing parts out there, and the passion for Defender is still there. So, for me, I've still got to... I've got to race the brick still, shall we say. Um, I've got to stick with the DNA of the historic Defender. So, what's next? Do you, what are you going to do this year? Have you got plans? <sighs> We're going to find out what's going on the hill rallies, as you and I spoke earlier on. Uh, I think we'll be picking some uh, all-wheel drive club, um, some of the events that I want to do. Uh, it's going to be summertime because Devante's mud tyre is not due till the, the summer. Uh, we were hoping it was going to be ready now, but because of the winter tour and there are other tyres that Devante do, uh, we're just pushing it back till July, uh, which then leads me into doing some of what you've already spoke about, some of the King of Britons. Um, dare I say, as Chris Bowler, I mean, I love some of the stages. I've driven some of the events yeah. with Mac Tools in their 2.2 Defender, and we've done extremely well um, supporting them. The, it is probably going to be going back to the old historic hill rallies where it is more rough than it is fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just don't want to damage the orange bits on Skippy. I know, skipping. that's the problem, um, isn't it? It's, the, it's that pretty bodywork. It's yeah, very difficult yeah. to... Uh... And the Ultra 4 guys, they do love a bit of rubbish racing. Um, and I don't mind that, but I don't want to rub in their roll cage onto my lovely aluminium panels. Absolutely not. No, I, it sounds promising on the Hill Rally front, so I think there's two planned for this year. So there's one in Scotland in yep. June, supposedly. Yep. Um, so looking forward to hearing details of that and see where that, where that might go. There's the Borders, yep. uh, which has obviously been running for, for several years now. Um, but next year's looking very exciting on the Hill Rally front. So there's a new Yorkshire Hill Rally being talked about. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Been getting involved in. Yeah, so we get racing in God's country. Um, and again, depending on where they use some of the stages in Yorkshire. You know, if we're in Dolby, uh, some of the old RAC routes are up there. We can get off on the Cat Twos. And as we said, I mean, the, the Welsh Hill Rally. We started on tarmac narrow roads. We then through forestry commissions where you were probably trying to jump the ruts and holes as I was. Then we were on to Cat 1s. Um, 
I've been chatting with Ryan Cook this morning. There was one bend um, that quite a few people had some very big moments. I personally put my car on its side and managed somehow to get it back on its wheels. Um, but there's been quite a few. And there was one bend on that stage in Kerry that none of us could work out what was going on on it. It was an off-camber, long right-hand bend that just wanted to kill all cars just and people. Let go, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, the hill rallies are great. Um, again, we need spectators. We need you to use your iPhones, get out, get it on social media. One, because I like to see what the car looks like on the outside, not just on the inside. Um, and we need the exposure. I mean, the camera crews and the organization of the events can only do so much. But unfortunately, the hill rallies, we don't always get television coverage. Um, but they are brutal. And know? we're all show-offs at heart. So Absolutely. We like, we, like, we like to be uh, like to perform in front of a crowd. Put a camera there, we'll attempt to tactically crash, but not. <laughs> You, you seem to do very well on that on the, yeah. uh, on the board at, on the, uh, on the Welsh Hill Borders Hill Rally yeah. last year. Yes, we had two moments. Uh, first stage, boost pipe come off, um, which I love the first stage as we were chatting this morning. Really technical. Again, ridge and furrow, wet grass, tarmac roads, cat ones. Uh, and then this hairpin right hand bend that I decided I was going to be, uh, God rest his soul, Ken blocking a defender, uh, which mid bend it decided it wanted to be a bicycle. Um, so that, that kept us entertained. But uh, I mean, not everyone would have got away with that. And I think you know, some some of some of I mean, some of the skills that you've acquired over the years through the seat time. So one of the things I'm I have to say very jealous of is is your ability to or your you know through through your work and through the venues that you work with, uh, the ability just to get out in cars on a very very regular basis and get seat time in anything Absolutely. makes a difference. So six days a week I am off road. Um, whether it's in the passenger seat or driver's seat. Uh, I do a lot of training for the fire and rescue, heart teams, helimed, uh, a lot of professional driver training, but I also do a lot of stunt training. So recently I've been teaching Catherine Zeta-Jones' stunt double uh, for Fast and Furious 10 um, to be doing some controlled donuts and, and hold the attitude of a car in a go-kart because we own six Can-Ams as well um, that we do some driver training in. Um, so, yeah, I am off-road six days a week doing professional driver training, high-speed, um, blue light training as well. Actually, you learn a lot from other people as well. So, you're sitting in the passenger seat, it's like, oh, I'm glad I never did that. Um, but, no, very privileged. 13 years old, I was taught to drive at Millbrook Proving Ground by Roger Clark, uh, as my father used to rally with the Ford World Rally Team. So, I had some pretty thick DNA laid down to me. Um, did your father do a hill rally? Yeah, so Dad used to hill rally, and as I love to remind him when I'm driving in the desert that he won his, uh, all of his events in the passenger seat, all of mine were won in the driving seat. Um, so we do have some nice conversations from time to time, but no, Dad rallied for a long, long time. Um, uh, Mark 1, Mark 2 escorts, etc. So, yeah, very privileged uh, to be brought up in that world. Um, I'm still paying for it all now. <laughs> uh, as you do in a family business but no, I love what I do uh, and the modern face of the experience and the modern brands changed a lot so um, my old school DNA within Land Rover is not no longer needed uh, we have a button that replaces a human nowadays um, but still teaching the DNA and the technique getting people to understand that the technology in modern vehicles comes from technique you Fair, know absolutely it's yeah. hugely clever I know some of the guys walking around here today work with the prototype cars and the engineering and whether you love or loathe the modern brand, the modern brand's capability. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, yeah. yes, we've got lower bumpers, we've got more plastic bits now, you've got to be better at reading the ground, but to a novice, and it pains me to say this, you can go that a modern car will be an old car and be more comfortable, more sustainable, I, I, more environmentally friendly, probably a little bit more boring. I, um, I was going to say, I, I can't quite see how the sport could have developed if we'd started from there, because no. it's actually that rawness of, of just being able to... Yeah. I mean, how many diffs do we truck? fix in the pits? I mean, yeah. uh, you know, we're doing all sorts of components. I mean, the hill rally, we came back in, we were doing a service, and Aston, as we were jacking the car, I went, I'd stop there and look at your engine. My engine mounts had literally fallen out of the car. And we hadn't noticed, we were about to go back out, so we had 15 minutes to change two engine mountings on Skippy. Uh, and we didn't even know if we could do it, because the engine's six inches further back into yeah. the car. Uh, so we used a grinder and some big hammers and long bars, and we changed them and in 15 minutes. Yeah. But the beauty of the motorsport is then we've got the team we're competing against is coming across. We've got spare parts helping us do it. Um, and that's the camaraderie within the motorsport that I want, I need, you know. We need that, that fun, that love, um, because it's what drives the sport and drives somebody else to compete against you. A, a question I wanted to ask most people that we talked to today is... Uh, what, what advice would you give to anyone who's sort of starting out or wants to get involved in, in, in off-road motorsport? 
So go and speak to your local club, um, all-wheel drive club. They're always looking for marshals. Um, there's a marshal event going on today that the amazing all-wheel drive club team are doing down at uh, Walters Arena where anybody that marshals, anybody that runs the event, you'll get a chance to get in the passenger seat with some of the vehicles. Yeah, I was really supposed good. to be down there saving myself a lot of mud and a lot of damage, a lot of cost, so I've come to the by, show. By, by being here. Um, Contact me on social media. I am more than happy for people to come down if I'm testing at ticks over to get in the passenger seat yeah. to see what we do. Um, absolutely, the grassroots stuff, the Freelander Challenge. Uh, I'm looking at buying a couple of Freelander ones at the moment to potentially look at a rental opportunity for people to start actually getting grassroots. They're not expensive cars to actually maintain um, and get people into the grassroots. Yeah. You know, the Can-Ams are a great way, but you're still looking at 20 odd grand. Whereas two thousand pounds for a Freelander one that's probably been raced two or three years ago that right. sat, it's no money, you no. know. Um, so grassroots stuff, get in, do some marshalling, um, and I've seen people I've seen from marshalling who are now running events, that's you right. know. Um, we're all open to talk about things. Uh, the eliteness in our sport, there isn't. There isn't. No. People want to share. And they want to learn. The, the great thing is there are so many different avenues and so many different ways. And, yep. and, and it kind of regardless, I mean, you've, you've come in through winch challenges and other things. Regardless of which discipline you take up, it's great experience. It, no, helps, it is. helps with every branch of the and sport. And everybody wants to help, you know. Everybody wants to point people in the right direction. Yes, when we're sitting at the start line, as you and I do, we still have a giggle. We still take the pee out of each other. We still pee on each other's cars. Um, <laughs> but the camaraderie, the fun, but also the caring and nature. We get to the end of the stage. I had a puncture. My jack wouldn't work. The rest of the guys are stopping to let me have their jack. And then I'm going to make the road time up, so you're all kind enough to get out of my way as I need to come past you. Because um, I think we did, what, 400 miles on road on the hill rally yeah, nearly? It was a lot of, it it was a lot of road mileage. Yeah. Um, but the stages, and we get to the, and the camaraderie at the start of the stages, you know. Uh, just the whole feel of the event and the way we compete is such a good feeling uh, in the UK. It really is. And now you've got Chris and the guys bringing the US over as well. And the guys in the US, I mean, I sat glued to the TV listening to our yeah. amazing compare Jim Marsden. And I was in awe of what they're doing in America, you know. One, the money they're spending, but it comes from sponsorship. Uh, not much bag of wind kicked around a flat grass field in America. So the, the, the sponsorship they're getting, you know, the, look at the cars they're running, the power they're running now, 1,000 horsepower. It's a crazy world uh, in America, but it's starting to come here. We're starting to go there. The future for off-road racing and motorsport in the UK, I think, is, is great. We just need to keep the venues open um, as best we can. Thank you very much, Ed, for your, uh, for your insights and your ex sharing your experience with the world of 4x4 racing. We'll be back at 12.30 with Holly Evans and Duncan Smith on the dark art of challenge uh, on Ultra 4 Europe and how Duncan got into the sport and progressed through it and how cars have changed that time. So we'll see you back here on the main stage at 12.30.